Hi, I'm Nate. I'm a junior in high school, and I've been volunteering at the Westboro Chestnut Orchard for about the past two years. I'm a steward in my town forest, and right next to me is the only chestnut tree in our entire forest. We use this tree to educate passerby and hikers about the effects of the American chestnut blight. I find it crazy to think about how just a century ago, one in four of the trees around me would have been American chestnuts. The amazing work I've done with the American Chestnut Foundation has inspired me to pursue environmental science in college. And maybe one day I'll be able to do significant work to restore the American chestnut. I'm a geriatric millennial woman, and like any geriatric millennial woman, I grew up obsessed with the movie The Last Unicorn. If you haven't seen it, yada yada anachronistic prog rock cartoon starring Alan Arkin and Mia Farrow about a world full of cynicism and darkness and grief because the most important species to that world has gone extinct, or so the people think. And right at the beginning of the movie, uh, I think it's Alan Arkin's character, this humble everyday man goes into the forest and his world lights up because he runs into this living example of this species everyone thought was gone. And the whole movie is a journey to bringing that last unicorn back to her people and starting the age of the unicorns again. And that is the sort of magic I thought wasn't real when I became an adult until I found the cause of American chestnut restoration. I am Mark Double, president of the West Virginia chapter. I've been involved with chestnut nearly all of my adult life, as I worked on the chestnut blight fungus at West Virginia University for most of my 41-year career. I'm in a small chestnut orchard on my wife's family farm, land that has been in the same family for more than 150 years. Our grandchildren currently live on the farm, making them the seventh generation to live on this land. It's my hope that when they are adults and they have children, that some of these chestnuts will have survived. Our ancestors have been good stewards of this land, and that is why I planted chestnuts, to continue land conservation and instill in our grandchildren the need to nurture this land that will be theirs someday. As the old adage goes, blessed are those who plant trees, knowing they will never sit under their shade. My hope is that future generations in our family will know the importance of caring for this land, and that involves planting chestnut trees. Hi, I'm Tracy Coulter. I've been a member of the American Chestnut Foundation for over 30 years. And the thing that really drew me to the American Chestnut was the fact that it was so much a part of Appalachian Mountain culture and so much a part of the ecosystem and the ecology of these mountains. So the hearing the story of the American Chestnut is part of the reason I decided to return to school after I joined the Chestnut Foundation to study forestry. And one of the first things we learned is what Aldo Leopold said about the importance of keeping all the cogs and wheels in intelligent tinkering. And when the American chestnut dropped out of our Appalachian forest, we lost a very important cog in the system. So by restoring the American chestnut, we can restore that portion of our forest, as well as use the science that we are using to restore the American chestnut, to restore some of the other species that are dropping out. I am, uh, my name is Russell Boyer. I'm a member of the American Chestnut Foundation. And I le love the American Chestnut because my great-grandmother, Ruth, tried to save it 70 years ago. And I want to save it now so I can see what it looked like 100 plus years ago. That is why I love the American Chestnut.